Hello guys, so today what I wanted to talk about is MGTOW. So can you be Christian and a MGTOW? I would say yes and no. According to MGTOW.com, it's defined as a statement of self-ownership where the modern man preserves and protects his own sovereignty above all else. It is the manifestation of one word, no. <laughs> Ejecting silly preconceptions and cultural definitions of what a man is. Looking to no one else for social cues. Refusing to bow, serve, and kneel for the opportunity to be treated like a disposable utility. And living according to his own best interests in a world which would rather he didn't. Now, with that, I agree with that. He's not someone's, no man is anyone's utility. You can say no, and that's perfectly fine. Um, someone, most people live life with their own best interests. And I would say that the world nowadays would rather he didn't. I have a lot of theories as to why that is, but uh, we're, we're not going to go into that today. <laughs> we're just going to talk about this. So I would say it can be good. So here's where I'm going as far as from a Christian perspective. I'm, I'm using mainly 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 7, 40. And I'll be taking some passages out of there to show you my thought process. Based on the definition given at MGTOW, there's a part of MGTOW which is good. Uh, the ideas that I saw in many videos when I'm watching them where that young men are waking up to the idea you don't need a sexual relationship with a woman to go along and live a good fulfilling life. This is true and also you can see biblical backing for this idea. So chapter 7 in 1 Corinthians says, Are you bound to a wife? Do not, be seek do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you do marry, you haven't sinned, and if a betrothed woman marries, she has not sinned. Yet those who marry will have worldly troubles, and I would spare you that. He says, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please God. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order, to secure your undivided devotion to God. So the Bible says if you're married, stay that way. If you're not, don't worry about being married. It's not a huge pressure thing. And this is something that is not taught to young men, and I, I cannot fathom why. And to me, it is just a way to control them. If, if a guy has to be married, then he has to be tied down and all this other stuff. Um, you don't have to. Not everyone is supposed to get married. <laughs> A great majority of us do want to marry, but if you don't want to, don't go looking for a wife and don't go doing that. And that is something that I am seeing lots of young gentlemen waking up to, and I'm kind of happy about that in a way. Um, if you don't want a wife, then don't go out looking. Don't think that that's part of something you have to have to be a whole person. None of that is true, and I don't know why people teach men that or or even women i've seen women being taught that but right now we're talking about guys so the second good idea i saw while watching the videos out there is this idea that you could know who you are that you should know who you are and what you want out of life and i would agree with that if you don't know that how are you supposed to make decisions how are you supposed to do anything but the bible talks frequently about making the choices to serve god and to serve him by seeing the reality in every situation and this includes your own, who you are, where you are in your life, where would you like to be, things like that. If you're not willing to sit with yourself and know who you are, it makes seeing reality and how things are in your own everyday life even more difficult. So this is also good. I like these things that are coming out of MGTOW. But the bad ideas I see in this way of thinking is the hatred Although understandable, because many men have been very just steamrolled by women out here, and uh, I can understand hating women. Uh, this doesn't help you or the people in general move on in life. You must move away from hatred in order to put yourself back together. There's an old saying said many ways that basically goes like this, whatever or whoever you hate lives with you. 
If you are trying to liberate yourself, think about the ways to do that. Uh, the Bible also has a thing, whatever is good, whatever is wise, whatever is productive, basically think on those things. So if you're a young male and you don't, you have no desire to be married, then don't go after the women. Maybe have some friends that are women, but you be very explicit about this is only a friendship and treat it just like that. So, you know, the men I see doing that, or they're blooming and at peace with themselves. They're helping other men who are enduring the injustices that men do face. And they don't fall into the trap of zero sociality with people. There are, you know, and women, there are good women out there. To ignore that puts a person who's practicing MGTOW in the same category as a feminist, who ignore the good men and the things that, the good things that men do and have done and also the correct social structure, okay? And I'm not talking about a lot. A lot of people like to say, like in the old times, guys used to have to deal with women because they're weaker and all this thing, and all this stuff. And we are weaker in many ways. Uh, what I would say though is that God has a proper structure as far as how we're supposed to treat each other. When we do bond in that sexual bond, it is a gifting of each other to each other where I don't have full control over my body. My husband doesn't have full control over his body. We belong to each other. Uh, but ultimately, my husband is the one that makes decisions. Okay, He's the one that decides how our house is going to be done, how our kids are going to be raised, where they're going to go to school, or if it's going to be homeschooling. This is the proper expression of manhood. This is the proper expression of where men should be in a social structure. They need to be the ones ultimately making the decisions. That's how they're made. They're made to make decisions. They're made to be able to put aside relationships, put aside emotion, and make the good choice. So a lot of times, since that's how men are made, there's, then when women take that from them, of course they're going to be angry, right? And that's the correct social structure. And men need to be out there creating the world. They need to be out there, you know, inventing. They need to be out there, you know, giving life direction. Women are more likely to sit at home and just stay, sort of hover where they are. And that's how they're made. If, if you're the one bearing the child, then you need to be able to hover where you are. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with either one of those. But increasingly, our society is taking that away from men, where they don't get to make the decisions of the household like they're supposed to be given. Their authority that they are given by God is taken. And that does make some people hate. And I would say to those people, don't, don't do that. It will destroy you instead of making you better. So, God also, I mean, science, let me, let me start this way. Science tells us all the time we're social beings. We have to have sociality. We need some kind of group that we belong to. And a lot of MGTOW guys will say, well, I'm not dealing with women or men who have women in their lives or men who have, her, who have women at all. And that cutting off is going to drive you mad. It's not good for you. And from a Christian perspective, God says in Hebrews 10, Let us consider how to spur one another on to love and good deeds. Let us not neglect meeting together as some have made a habit, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And the day is the end of the world. So, <clears throat> we're supposed to come together and encourage each other. Even if, let's say, as a man, you're not ready to rejoin society with the women in it, Get around a bunch of good, godly guys. Get around a bunch of guys who have their morals straight, who have, you know, their, um, who know what they want in life. You, you need it, support, you need that support, you need the encouragement. This MGTOW can bring out the selfish side of those positive aspects of manlyhood. So everyone must be free to live and choose to let God be the guide in our life. 
We must have just justice in relationships and must be put into and those relationships must be put into their proper perspective. In relationship to authority, like it mentioned before, there's always going to be one higher authority in our lives. At least one. Uh, whether it be someone we respect that we put there, because then we will listen to them, things like that, or someone that's put there by our job or the government or whatever. There's always going to be an authority that you're going to have to listen to at a certain point. So it's important to be able to recognize these authorities, recognize um, how to deal with them appropriately. Ultimately, there's only one way to do that, and that's to work and go through life with this in mind. Whatever you do, work at it with your whole being. Now, if you're not a Christian, I'm just going to stop right there. If you're working at something, it's got to be something that is going to be good for you. Otherwise, you need to stop working at it. If it's not going to improve your life, stop working at it. <laughs> if it's not going to help you get closer, help you develop your spiritual side, help you develop your social um, stuff, help you do these things, it's time to stop working at that. You only have so much time on this earth. Don't waste it. Don't waste it being angry. Don't waste it on hatred. Go forward and do the best you can in your life. For the Christian it says, for the Lord is who you're working for and not men. You know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. It is the Lord Christ you are working for. So ultimately, guys, from a Christian perspective, we don't work for, let's say I work for Subway down the road or something. And I have a boss there, of course. So that's an authority that's over me. Um, he ultimately is not who I'm working for. Ultimately, I'm working for God. There's a reason God wants me there. He has me witnessing to someone. He has me working for a family to support other family, something like that. So <clears throat> ultimately, you work for God. So that's Colossians 3.23, in case anyone wants to listen to it. Ultimately, guys, we need to be living life that we are led to lead by God. If you don't believe in God and you're watching this video, that's fine. You need to lead the life that you were designed for. I do believe in a design. Whether you believe God designed you and is leading you down that path, or you just believe that you are here, you are designed, you're put together to be a certain way, you need to do that. Don't waste your time on hate. It's not going to get you anywhere. I would, if you can, help just one other person in your life. That opens up a lot of stuff for you. I would say just help another guy who's maybe going through the injustices that do happen to men out here. So that's all I wanted to say about MGTOW, guys. I was kind of, I like it, and then I kind of don't because men and women are designed to be together. And I don't mean sexually. I just mean together as a group. We're designed for each other. We each have strengths and weaknesses that build each other up, and that's how that's supposed to be. You you see this everywhere. Women cannot be without men. Men cannot be without women. We're not designed that way. So I would encourage you, if you're going down the MGTOW path, to take your time, learn who you are, learn what you want out of life. Do you want a wife? If not, eh, maybe uh, you just don't worry about how many, you know, you just don't worry about all that stuff. Uh, this life out here, this world out here, it encourages us to do the wrong thing. And I know for a fact that the Bible has all the right in it. So, if you're watching this you don't believe in the Bible, may, just look into it, man. I'm going to pull an Eddie Bravo. Look into it. <laughs> and until next time, guys, I will see you later. Remember to read your Bible and pray. And if you're not a Christian and you're watching this, I welcome any any conversation that you would like to have. Um, I think I just want to be clear, guys. Ultimately, I fall on the area where I don't think MGTOW is completely wrong. I think it is it is a response to the insanity of feminism, and I am not a feminist. I think feminism is, is insane. Um, but you can't go that far over. Um, I don't think people, we scientifically, we know we're not designed to be alone. We have to have 
our grouping, whatever it is. So just keep that in mind. I hope every man out there is doing well. You've got that job that's that's supporting you. If you don't, guys, keep going, keep looking, and I will pray for you. I am saddened. One of my favorite things is just to sit in a room and listen to guys talk. It's one of my favorite things. One of my favorite things to do is sit in a room with men, even if they're just quiet. I I love it. I love guys. I love men. I think they're awesome. I think they're the driving force of the universe. <laughs> And uh, I just think more men need to hear that, that they're awesome and they're the driving force of the universe. And I just wish more men would see themselves that way. So I, I believe that's how God made them. I believe that's how God made men, to be the driving force of the universe. So until next time, guys, I will see you later. Remember to pray and read your Bible. And I will hopefully see you tomorrow. Bye.